What's up, guys? Welcome to the very first episode of the Marketing Reseller Podcast. Um, today, I'm going to be doing... Um, so this is kind of like a reboot for my entire podcast. I have my wife here with me today. Um, and I figured the best way to reboot this whole thing would be to tell the whole story. Like, where I came from, where I started. Kind of go from there. I know I kind of, most of the time, start off with my, uh, my serving days. And I don't really go anywhere before that. And I feel like, uh, you know, as, you know, many, you know, at the time of you guys watching, 3,800 people follow me on YouTube, a lot of people on Facebook too. So I figured I would just start from the very beginning and go from there. So I'll start off and then... Um, at conception. At con <laughs> yeah. Yes, let's start at conception. I saw the light as it was coming, as I was coming. <laughs> it was a deep, dark tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the earliest, um, like the very earliest that I can actually remember things um, as a child was well, with me and my brother. And uh, but like the shrimp boat, actually, like yeah. two, three years old, whenever. So for, for those of you guys who, you know, don't know and like don't really know my story, um, I actually grew up on a shrimp boat, like two years old. Like car seat straps to the boat. <laughs> car seat strapped in to the boat. I'd walk down the gunnels, the sides of the boat, and uh, and you know walk to my dad and things like that. And I grew, I literally grew up on those. Um, two. At two years old. Yeah. Well, I mean, my mom was going to school. Yeah. And, and your dad had to work. He had to work. He had to bring the money in. So. And they had a kid. So. Yeah. All right. Me and my brother. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Oh, wait, you and your brother are a year and a half apart. Mm -hmm. Oh, kids. <laughs> so, kids. so I, I basically grew up on a shrimp boat and, um, you know, at, from very young age, I, I dealt with fish, I dealt with uh, shrimp, I dealt with all kinds of different things. And, it, you know, honestly, looking back on it, most people don't grow up that way and it's pretty freaking cool, <laughs> you know. Um, but it, it's kind of funny now because I grew up on the beach and, you know, nowadays people are always asking me, man, man it must have been the coolest thing to grow up on the beach. I don't about like southeast texas yeah. beach but yeah dirty water and stuff but you know people are always like man you grew up on the beach you must go there all the time no <laughs> no I've, I've, I've been in, i've been to the beach enough times in my life where i only go now to kind of like for recollect yeah or for the kids and like trigger some memories and things like that that's about it um i basically have to like bribe you with a beach day yes. with the kids like I don't know, you could have some hot Cheetos. And then you're like, I'm on 75 hearts. Like, well, <laughs> damn, okay, I don't know. <laughs> you can have some. There's no cheating, yeah. Keto Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so I basically grew up on a shrimp boat. Uh, I went to a very, very small high school, very small. We ended up graduating with a total of 26 people. Um, she went to a school actually right down the road, about 20 miles away. Mm -hmm. uh, we met, you know, kind of high school sweethearts, but, um, we met, oh yeah, I'm going to tell the story. Okay, go for it. We met at Market Basket whenever I was working at a cat, uh, as a cashier and we were 16. Mm -hmm. You were about to turn 17. Um, I turned, well, we met in like October. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, we, yeah. we we chatted for a couple months before we even started dating because just you like to take it slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I like to be sure of things, okay? You weren't sure of me? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, um Well I to be fair, I had had some, some weird relationships oh, yeah. already and I, it was just one of those yeah, things. She wanted to hold hands right after they started dating. No, she wanted to kiss right after they started dating. But it is what it is. It's okay. You're just conservative. <laughs> it's okay. But, okay. Market basket, cashier. Uh, so, interestingly enough, you know how in, like, movies, whenever, like, you see your true love or something, like, you just kind of stare at each other, and it's, like, cinematic and beautiful, and there's music? That kind of happened to us, but it just looked like two psychos looking at each other. <laughs> Like it does in real life. And yeah, not there was no music. 
There, <laughs> well, there was the music. It was a, it was a the store, store music. Yeah. There was the store music, probably playing like some Mariah Carey. I don't know, mm -hmm. some something old. They played old music, like before the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we we he passed by me, and we just like stared at each other, and it was like looking back on it, we must have looked like psychos. Because it was a full, like, 15 seconds. Well, I don't think it was fifteen. It was, like, no. five or six. It like, was, like, five or six straight eye contact seconds. Like, and then he walked away, and I was, like, <laughs> he was cute. <laughs> and uh, then he went to go check out with my best friend's sister, which I found out. That he's known them, my best friend's family, since birth. And I was like, small world. And then um, the bagger for my best friend's sister came over and was like, hey, so this guy like thinks you're really cute. Like, like, to be fair, I asked him. Yeah. Like, I, like, I walked up to him, like, because he was somewhere else in the store at that point. I was like, hey, you know. Guy to guy. Guy to guy. <laughs> bro to bro, man. Like, can you tell me a little bit about the blonde in the front? You know? Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of how everything worked out. Mm -hmm. I remember you had the scrunchy hair, and yeah. that was your thing back then. And, oh, uh, yeah. The scrunchy yeah. hair with the straight bangs. But, yeah, that is how we met. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as you walked away, Aaron was just like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> To, to kind of back up a little bit before all of that, I do want to oh, kind yeah. of talk about like what, you know, how I grew up a little bit. So I went, like I said, I went to a very small school, mm -hmm. very, very small. And, um, before you even met me. Yeah. This was all before I met you. Yeah. I don't know where my life was. I don't know what I was doing, but, I brought, um, I brought meaning into your mm, life. No. no. <laughs> um, so I grew up on the shrimp boat and my dad had also my dad was a business owner essentially uh he worked for himself self-employed but anyway he started me and my brother out mowing lawns different things like that and um you know he he always kind of wanted us to be able to make our own way in the world and kind of make our own money and different things like that so he showed us different ways to do that now at the in at the time we absolutely hated it god we hated it your kids yeah we were kids we just wanted to play with our friends right like that was that was the thing so we didn't you know growing up i didn't i didn't understand like what he was trying to do because you know your perspective as a kid is much different than it is as, as an adult um and then so we did that for a few years and um and then we uh we actually got into a house um, that, so my parents had at this, at this point, like had, you know, my mom had become a nurse. My dad was still shrimping, but he was also doing construction at the same time. So he was basically running two businesses and, uh, we had bought, you know, basically, um, basically the dream house that my parents wanted right on the, right on the, uh, water. Right, like, Cause we were big with boats. Right. And, um, so we could take the boats out whenever we wanted to and just different things like that. And um, what, what's crazy about this story too, and I, I don't tell us a whole lot. Um, so we're, we're like in a hurricane alley down here in Texas. Uh, it hasn't happened in a while, but um, we were rebuilding this house, basically just uh, revamping the whole thing. And the last thing that we had to do was, you know, uh, put down the granite countertop in our kitchen. And uh, that's when Hurricane Ike actually happened. Um, many of you might have seen it on the news. It was, what, almost 15 years ago now? 2007, yeah. I think. Yeah, it was about 15 years ago. And um, it's a crazy story because we actually weren't going to leave. We were going to stay with the house. But my dad had noticed that, that the tide right outside was actually rising. Usually with hurricanes, the tide goes out. It's usually how it works because uh, the whole storm thing but it wasn't doing that it was doing the opposite and he was like we probably need to go my dad always had a really like sixth sense for this especially anything to do with the water um i mean you know this like yeah. you've seen him like 
almost like predict what's going to happen almost mm -hmm. to the T. And, um, to be a clear day and be like, Hey, we need to head out. It's about yeah. to rain. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's been on the water all his life, so that that's all he knows. And he was, you know, he was just like, we, we need to go. So what we did is we actually went to uh, stay with one of his friends, which was funny enough. Yeah. Was the, the people that I was living with for that time mm -hmm. uh, a little bit before I met you. Erin was one of the people, one of her friends that she was working with. Yeah. The one that came up to her and was like, do you know who that is? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my so, best friend, Emily, her older sister, Erin, is kind of... Funny enough, you actually might have come over to the house a few times. Oh, I, I did. There. I hung out there all yeah. the time, but you just <laughs> weren't there, I guess. Yeah. Maybe you guys were working. We, yeah, at that time, we were, we were definitely working, which I'll get into here in a minute because, wow. Um, so... When Hurricane Ike hit, we lost the entire house. Like, I'm not talking like it flooded. I'm talking it literally lifted it off of like the the pillars of the house and took it away. That's how bad it was. So um, I still remember to this day when we were trying to get back to the house, we had to, uh, it, was, it was so flooded still three days after the hurricane that we still couldn't drive there. And um, we had to take a boat to get to get there actually and um so that's what we did and I, I still remember to this day like driving back up the canal where the house was and you know just like in my head I was just like it's still there it's still there but like I could literally just see it and it was not still there it was it was just one of those things and I mean to the you know and to this day I still have issues with that you know we talked about this a while back because I have a big problem with with buying new things because of that mm -hmm. so. pretty much like i have to make the purchase like he'll give me like if it's a big purchase like something like this he'll like give me the money but i have to be the one to purchase it because like he he doesn't want to have the stuff for it to be taken away basically it yeah I mean like I mean it is a valid response to anybody who has lost a lot of stuff is if you have stuff it can be gone in an instance so like I'm trying to declutter the house to help because we do have a lot of stuff that we don't need um, I just donated a bunch of kids blankets to our kids daycare because we don't need them and sometimes the kids get to nap time and Maybe their parents forgot their blanket. So it was just something to do. Um, yeah. I mean. And like the, the kids, sorry. Mm -hmm. the, the kids clothes that don't fit them anymore. I, I don't like just throw them away. I have a younger sister who has a younger son than my kids. And like we live in League City. So there's a Facebook group like free League City things. I'll just leave stuff out there and be like, hey, free, free shit. <laughs> Come grab it. <laughs> I mean, we made a lot of memories in that house, though. I mean, it was on that road where I where I busted out my two front teeth. Yes, for yes. The, for those of you who know, those teeth I, are fake. You know, <laughs> half of my teeth are fake, and you know, in my videos, like you know, I have a I have a part where it's chipped, where it stains a little bit. Yeah, that's that's fake. So it's a fake. Like half of my half of my front teeth are fake, uh, just because I fell off my bike on the way to school mm -hmm. and literally shattered my face. So. But, I did that too, but my teeth were baby teeth. <laughs> yeah. So, like half of my front, you know, this beautiful smile I have is fake. Um, <laughs> but um, I do my hair flip. <laughs> after that, though, we uh, we were, we had to live with my dad's friend for oh. quite a while, and um, and for a while we had to uh, we we went actually around chopping up trees mm -hmm. for quite a while. After um, I everybody yeah, my had dad, messed my, up trees. Yeah, my dad was trying to just have me and my brother do something that, you know, didn't involve just staying at the house and doing nothing, which I really appreciate him for doing because I still remember my mom trying to, like, literally put our life back together. Like, get Social Security cards, get all of, like, the, the stuff. You guys just had the clothes on your back. Pretty Well, yeah, and okay. just a couple government documents, and that was it. That was it. She was literally trying to 
rebuild like all of our family photos, everything. She was trying to get them from family members and it was a, and, and that was one of the reasons my dad wanted us to like just do something and work and he helped, you know, he paid us more than he paid himself at that point, but he just kept me and my brother busy um, with that. And then we moved, uh, after all of that, we found a place back in High Island, uh, which is where the school is that I went to, because me and my brother still wanted to go to, to school there. And um, once we moved back there, um, I mean, that's kind of really where I started to like change a whole lot of things. Like um, I started running a whole lot. Um, I used to be, well, I mean, I guess I still am. I'm not, I'm not a big runner anymore because I'm a little bit more focused on, you know, building these guns, right? But, um, but that's kind of whenever I started my, started a fitness journey. Um, and then my dad also wanted me to basically start my own business at the age of about 13 years old. So at 12 years old, he was already putting me in boating school, um, so that I could learn how to, you know, get my own boat, get a license. And I actually wasn't old enough to get the license. Funny enough, I don't think I ever told you this. No. I wasn't old enough at 12 years old to get my boating license. I had to be 13. But uh, he put me through the course anyway. And then the boating instructor gave it to me anyway. Just because I was so young and I passed the test. Yeah, it was pretty cool. But <laughs> he wanted me to do that because we were starting a new business. Uh, picking up crab traps. Um, so we would buy hundreds of these these crab traps. And... Um, we would, we would set them out and then I'd go in and pick them up and he went with me for the first couple of times and then he's like, all right, you're on your own. So at, at 13, 14 years old, I was out there by myself, driving the boat, doing the things, making the money. And, uh, and he was actually, you know, whenever I'd come home, we'd sit down every day and we'd, um, he would, he would pull out like a spreadsheet looking paper. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it, it looked like a spreadsheet. Uh, at the time, I didn't know what it was and all of that. And he would show me how to do the numbers for like that day. And um, I hated doing that. Freaking hated it. And now it's kind of funny enough. It's full circle. I teach my students how to do that. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, KPI track and key performance indicators. But it's kind of funny how that's full circle. But um that lasted for probably three years. I would do it like um, when during the summers, mostly when I wasn't in school. And uh, we did pretty well with that. I was making some really good money with it. And my parents were putting away half of everything I earned into a savings account. And, um, and I'm really glad they did that because, you know, I mean, who doesn't want that? Especially when you're older. But... Um, it's kind of funny as I ended up buying a car with all of that. And then, yeah, it's a, it's a whole story. But, um, so we were crabbing, we were doing that. We called it crabbing. And uh, that's what I did for probably three straight summers. And I'll be real with you guys, I absolutely hated it um, because I wasn't hanging out with my friends. I kept remembering that. Like, all of my friends were... All of my high school friends, or I guess, middle, yeah, high school, they were all just, you know, hanging out with each other and, and doing their thing and, like, just having fun, you know, doing high school stuff, and I was working. We were uh, driving around, going to the Dairy Queen. They were having a lot of fun. Yeah, they were having a lot of fun. <laughs> going yeah. to Sonic. Yeah, a lot of fun. Happy hour. Half yeah. price drinks. Doing drugs. Yeah, they were having oh, a lot too. of fun. A lot too. of fun, yeah. Yeah, they so <laughs> you know, looking back, I'm glad my dad kept me busy with work. But, <laughs> you know, it is, you know. Um so we did that and then um what's crazy about that is we were actually so something had happened and we were we were we were gonna stop the crabbing business about three years after we started it. And uh, the the very last day of uh me picking up the crab traps, um I had stacked all of them on the boat because that's how you have to bring them back in. You have to stack them all correctly. And I couldn't see the front of the boat. And um, so this is where I nearly died, actually. 
Um, and this is before I met you too. Mm -hmm. um, so I couldn't see it and I ran into a big barge like, and I caught the side of it and uh, knocked me out, the whole thing. And um, I still remember waking up and luckily the, Luckily, I had an aluminum boat that I, that so I was able to just bounce off of it. Um, but yeah, that was kind of crazy. But I, I got knocked out. I woke up, and uh, motor was still running. The only thing that had happened is the battery fell over, so I just had to rehook it up. And the people from the barge were yelling at me, and they were like, "Are you okay?" I just remember being in shock, actually, and... Uh, well, I mean, you were, like, 14. Yeah, I was, like, I was about 15 at that point, I think. And I just put everything back together, and I just took off. <laughs> just in shock. <laughs> yeah, I was just in shock, and I got back to the I got back to the dock, and my, my dad saw the big-ass dent in the front of the boat, and he was like, what the hell happened? I was like, I hit a barge. And he's like, you what? And, uh... I guess he thought I was going to have, like, some, like, really traumatic experience from it. Like, that's what he thought, because he, he, well, I mean, he, he didn't allow me to go out for a night, another two days, because I was trying to finish everything. Mm -hmm. But for, for some reason, like, even back then, I, like, a huge event like that, I just blew it off. Like, the whole thing. Like, it never happened. Kind of crazy like thinking of it but I don't have any like crazy experiences from it I mean it was a it was a crazy experience in and of itself but so yeah that's how I almost died it's just locked in the vault yeah in the mine vault let's just take the key and toss it <laughs> well, I mean I'm not gonna dwell on it you know exactly it's in the vault it never happened yeah that's how that's what happens to a lot of my traumatic memories is this well in the vault to add to that before we stopped everything I mean I had also uh, here's another story from my crabbing days when I had to, so this, this is kind of a crazy story. And this was before the barge. Yeah, this was a little bit before the barge. Um, and I forgot to tell this part, but we, I was out crabbing one day and it was raining, it was storming and everything. And, uh, there was another guy who was crabbing in the same area. Um, well, two guys, I guess. And... Um, I guess their boat had been struck by lightning and he had somehow made it to the shore and I was headed down the, uh, the intercoastal, which is a big like river type thing that connects everything. And, um, I saw him like, like running on the bank and I was just like, what the hell? Like, what is going on here? And then there was a barge over to the other side with people like, Hey, go get him. And I was just like, okay. Like, so I did. And then he told me what happened. His, his boat had been struck by lightning and uh, him and unfortunately the other guy passed away um, instantly. So his friend passed. Yeah. His, it wasn't my friend, but it was the, the other guy's friend yeah. and he um, kind of crazy. Um, so what I ended up doing was I got the guy to the barge so he could get medical attention and, um, and then I called my mom, who's a nurse, and I was like, hey, um, I need you to get to the ramp. Um, we gotta go get this guy and his boat um, so we can bring it back to the dock and, and the EMTs and everything can, can take care of everything. So, what, so I went and got her and then I went back and I found the, I found the boat and I'll still, I still remember it to this you know, day. Uh, he was just like frozen in time. I mean, it was it was a lightning strike, so it had literally like frozen his body in place. He was he was basically welded to his boat, um, which was you know it was terrible. Um, anyway, my mom got on the boat because she's a nurse and you know she was doing her thing. And um, anyway, we ended up dragging the boat back, getting him to the EMTs and. Uh, all of that. So that was a, that was a pretty crazy experience too. To be, you know, I guess looking back on it, I've had a lot of crazy experiences in my life. <laughs> um, and once again, you know, my mom thought that was going to like be a really traumatizing thing for me, but I just, it wasn't, it was, I guess I just looked at it like, you know, that's life. 
and you know we don't know what's going to happen. I, however, it did make me appreciate life a whole lot more. Um, just seeing how how quickly everything can just be taken away, like instantaneously. Um, so after all that, we we kind of put a halt on the crabbing and um, and then I really started focusing a bit more on sports in school. Um, we since we had a small school. Um, I did every sport there was. Um, I did track, baseball, golf. Uh, I tried tennis, so I didn't, but I was already doing too many sports at the time. And then I did football for two years. And then... Uh, baseball. Oh, yeah, baseball. I did football for two years until our school went to six-man football. And then I was just kind of like, no, I'm done. Like, this isn't... And, and at, the, at this point, I was, I was more of a skinny kid than anything else. Um, but football just wasn't my, it really wasn't my thing. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm really glad that I didn't stick with it because my best friend still has back problems to this day. Did he from, tear his ACL? Nah, that was another one. Oh. Yeah. A different one. I actually saw him a while back. Um, so anyway, I started focusing a bit more on school and, uh, and just, you know, improving the intellect and, um, just kind of making money in, in my own ways at that point, working with my dad, going shrimping, things like that. And um, and then I believe it was junior year. This was like a little bit before I met you. My dad moved us down to Port Mansfield for a summer, me and my brother. No, this we was before dating. I, we weren't dating at that point. In junior year? Oh, maybe we were. Dating. Sophomore year. Yeah, so sophomore year. My dad moved us down to Port Mansfield, which is like South Texas, Harlingen, that, that type of area of Texas, uh, where there is nothing, by the way, other than fishing. And um, we were there for about a summer. I, I absolutely hated it uh, because all there was for me to do was work and work out. That was it. <laughs> like, my life at that point was very boring. And, you know, we let our dad know that. And, and it, we ended up moving back. Um, I did make a lot of money while I was down there. That's where I actually, uh, actually started like two or three different small size businesses where I would like clean fish for people as they came in. Cause it was a huge fishing hub and, uh, people would come in with a whole bunch of trout and I'd be like, you know, for $5 a fish, I'll clean them. And, uh, you know, I was making some, I was making some good money from that. Cause some were coming in with a hundred, 200 trout, a lot of work though. Um, so, That's how you got date money. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and that actually lasted quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we went to the movies like every week. We did. We absolutely did. So we came back after that because me and my brother hated it down there. Um, just because we didn't have any, there was no kids. It was just all old fishermen people. And it, it just wasn't for us. And um, anyway, we came back and uh, then I really got dialed in with, the sports again, and um, at this point, I was I was really in shape. I was running three miles a day. That's I mean that's very mm -hmm. very shortly after we came back is when I met you, mm -hmm. and that's when I was like skinny, blonde, super blonde, sun sun bleach blonde, sun bleach blonde, super tan. I was like, what is a Californian surfer doing down here? <laughs> yeah, and. Um, so then we, uh, yeah, we, I met her in high school and then uh, finished out high school. Graduated, six in my class, and then we went off to Lamar College mm -hmm. at Lamar University, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, my story there is I, I could never really figure out what I wanted to do. You know, I guess that was, I mean, how many times did I change my major? Like four or five times? Um, Gosh, I hate well, that. First, you were going for sports medicine, I think, right? Oh, yeah. To back up on this, before we got into college, there was a couple of other big things that happened. Um, if you're in... So, I know a lot of high schoolers follow me. And if you're in high school and you plan on going to college, apply for as many scholarships as you can. Ooh. As many as possible. Yeah. Okay? Here's why. <laughs> Most people don't apply. Okay, so 
So do what most people don't do. <laughs> if you want to go to college, go for free and get scholarships to do it. Don't don't use financial aid. It, it's gonna take a long time to fill out all of those scholarships, but more often than not, a lot of people are not going to apply because it's too much work. Yeah, there's too much friction. Yeah, but like you're gonna be doing the same shit in college anyway. <laughs> yeah, you really will. Like yeah. hours of work for a good grade, and then you end up making a 96 instead of a hundred anyway after hours and hours to put in no. but like do the work to be able to pay for college so you don't have to pay for college when you're out of college 100 percent. so i applied for her as i went to my guidance counselor in school and luckily she was great and um she gave me literally every possible scholarship that there was and uh i applied for literally all of them and i got most of them because yeah. nobody else applied. <laughs> you got the Astros one. I did, yeah. I got the Houston Astros uh, uh, MLB scholarship. It wasn't a baseball scholarship, but it was a scholarship nonetheless. And um, cool thing about that is I ended up getting picked to actually throw the first pitch yeah. on at the game. I still have the pictures of that on my Facebook. And I think I still have the video somewhere, yeah. maybe. Yeah. My, my best friend was super jealous because he's a huge baseball fan and I wasn't. So. <laughs> but hey, that's what happens when you apply for things, you know, things like that happen, mm -hmm. you know, like everybody can talk about luck, but luck is when, when preparation and, you know, usually skill sets meet. But in that, in that case, it was just preparation. Yeah. Um, and then I, and then honestly, I guess I did luck out cause they picked me. So it's it was cool. a drawing. It was a drawing. Yeah. But um, like, I already knew whenever I just knew it. So whenever I was sitting there with Steve and Ag yeah. uh, Steve, Agnes was Steve, no, yeah. yeah, just Steve, and then Gentry, I think, came with us too. Yeah. But like, I was just sitting there, and I just knew, I knew, like Chris deserves this. He's gonna get picked. There was not a single doubt in my mind. And then whenever they said like Chris Schroeder, and I was like, I already knew that. Yeah, that was cool. That was a big stadium. Being out there on the mound, that was wild. Yeah, and then the girl who got picked was wearing, like, the same exact outfit as you. She was, yeah. And, like, coincidentally. But I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> but, Why do y'all uh, look like a couple? <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, apply for as, as many scholarships as humanly possible, especially if you're in that position right now. Um, anyway, we got that. I got about 30 grand in scholarships just because I, I did the work, right? And um, I went, went off to college and, and then changed my major about five different times. I did not graduate from the university um, because I didn't stick with something long enough to well, actually do it. You went to sports medicine to... Physical therapy. Physical therapy nursing. to nursing. You got into the nursing I program. I got accepted. But you were like, I don't want to be a nurse. Yeah. And then... There was something else between, I think you, was it chemistry, something biology, like yeah. something like that. But, and then finally you went to LIT. Yeah. So I transferred to a trade school instead and started studying oper uh, occupational health and safety. Graduated with that. We were, s and we were married at this point. Yep. And, um, wow. At that point we were super broke. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. After I was in college. I was serving in the morning, doing school in the afternoon, and I hated my life. Like, absolutely. Like, it was horrible. Well, I was making more money serving than I... I, yeah. I was doing very well serving. I, did we Did we get married after yeah, college? We, yeah, we weren't in college. Well, no, we I, weren't in the university at that point when we got married. Yeah. So... Yeah, because you you wanted to wait until you graduated, I yeah. think. Or and then you I didn't graduate. But, like, you were doing all of that stuff. I was working two jobs because I wasn't in university. And I was stressed to the max yeah. for the wedding. We ended up paying for... Courthouse. Go to the courthouse. Yeah. Spend all the money on the honeymoon. <laughs> like... Yeah, we paid for our own wedding. For the most part, uh, most of I mean, it. You paid for the venue. 
Um, like my mom did pay for yeah a good chunk of it, and your parents paid for our honeymoon. Yeah. Um, but we were also very broke. Like we, we were so poor. So like, broke. I loved our wedding. The only thing that I didn't really like was how hot it was. Yeah, it was hot. But like we would never have been able to get that wedding without yeah. the help. Yeah. So yeah, we were in college. We got married. And, um, and then... We had a year of childless bliss. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, like, so, and, and this is actually the point where, like, phone flipping comes in. Um. That was after running. No, it was before. You were pregnant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm about to tell that, that, that. That fun story. Mm -hmm. um, so we, um, at this point, we were super broke, right? And I still remember the day. Uh, we were, it was a tropical storm outside, couldn't go to work, all the roads were flooded. And I was like, man, like, what the heck do I do? Like, this sucks. Like, I, like, I can't work. I can't make any more money at the moment. And, and then, I was pregnant. And she was pregnant. So, you know, I'm under all this pressure. And um, I was also so sick that I couldn't work. Yeah, she was throwing up, like, all the time. I had morning sickness multiple times a day, every day. Like... The whole nine months. Some of my teeth are <laughs> fake. <laughs> um, anyway, and then I saw an ad by by David Kosciusko, and um, and he had an ebook, and, and this is, I mean, this is the start of finding my very first real mentor. Um... He's the one that actually got me into this business. And uh, anyway, I saw his ad, I downloaded his ebook, and then um, I did exactly what it said. I posted an ad on Craigslist and Facebook groups, and the guy reached out. And he was like, hey, I got two phones I'm looking to sell. I remember them specifically. They were iPhone 6 Pluses. And uh, we had like $200 in our bank account. Yep. And um, I'm like, all right, babe, um, I'm going to go buy these two phones. And she was like, what? I was like, we already have phones. <laughs> <laughs> and uh why do we need two more phones i was like i'm gonna flip them she's like you're gonna what wait you're gonna just flip them over yeah so uh i took the last 200 dollars we had and i went and bought the phones <laughs> and um they ended up being icloud locked i didn't know what that meant and uh mm -hmm. so ended up selling them for parts for less than i paid so that was, that was, you know, that was a win, right? Um, a learning experience. It was definitely a learning experience. Uh, but at that time, it felt like a gigantic failure. I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, so that, that was my first real experience flipping devices. And um, so from then, I, I just studied things a little bit better. And I made a couple of other mistakes along the way. We also had two roommates while, oh, yeah, I, was, we did. Yeah. while I was pregnant and broke. Yeah, we sure could did. not afford <laughs> to live on our own. <laughs> That's how yeah. poor we were. We could not afford to live on our own. Yeah, that was fun. We had two roommates and they were sharing a room. <laughs> Poor Gentry. Hey, they, were great, they were great friends though. Yeah, so. it was just like, you sleep on that side of the bed, I'll sleep on this side <laughs> of the bed. They had like a pillow fort down the middle. <laughs> That was, that was good times. Uh, good old days. Mm. But, uh, yeah, that was my very first experience with buying devices and then selling them. And so it wasn't a great start. Anyway, I went back to work and um, got some more money and then figured I'd try it again. And, uh, and this time it actually did work. I made like 30 bucks on my first device that I ever successfully flipped. Um, I still remember the day that one sold. Uh, it, was a, it was a janky android phone and i actually stuck with android phones for quite a while because it's all i knew i didn't know how to use iphones at all and i don't think androids get icloud locked i mean they get google locks no, but google it's not locked. as big of a deal but um anyway i stuck with what i knew for a while and then um and then i and then another hurricane hit so there was that yes, and hurricane. i was able to get in on the cleanup crew thing for that um make i still remember 11 dollars an hour 12 hour days is that what, you, you had to go was that? It's, it wasn't remember. imelda i can't remember which one it was there were so many at this point um but 
Like, you had to go live with your mom because I was literally never home. Yeah, you were doing, like, um, six 12s or something like that, basically? 12, just 12-hour days. 12-hour days, like, seven, every single day. It was, like, day. seven days a week. Yeah, it sucked. And I, I couldn't do anything on my own. I was confined to my bed, throwing up in a bucket next to me. Yeah. Like, I could only eat crackers, which half of the time I threw up the crackers, and then I would have to sip water and that was like my life during pregnancy like i love my child <laughs> but i did not like my pregnancy my first one was it was bad and i could couldn't smell the stand i could no i couldn't stand the smell of meat yep. so like i tried i would i would try to like make a dinner i would drag myself out of bed and make dinner for him because he was working so hard just trying to get us to s some money. And I would try to make dinner and I'd be like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> Go throw up in the bathroom and then be like, okay, I, I somehow cooked that pork chop, but it's in the microwave because I cannot let it, I can't smell it. Gosh. And then I went to go live with my mom for two months. Yeah. I don't know how long. While I was had, working. Yeah. While you were working. He would come see me sometimes but like he he still those 12 hour days like working waking up at like five go to work at six come home at like yeah so. seven because the traffic yeah i got sick i got sick of it i was actually still buying phones after work too yeah like after i was getting off at six i was i was buying phones i was i was trying so hard to get out of it so hard yeah. um, and then our roommates told us like hey once the baby's born <laughs> i think like after two months after the baby was born, yeah. like that's when they left. So like he knew that that deadline was coming, that we're gonna have to pay the rent on our own. Which like, I did not blame them at all. We had yeah. a screaming newborn. Mm -hmm. But during the pregnancy, yeah, you were working really hard. Yeah, and, that, and this is actually the time where I like, I was, I was doing that. And then, um, and then I actually tried selling vacuum cleaners for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, and when I tell you guys, I was trying so hard to get out of like that, just like, just the constant brokenness. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was trying so hard. Um, so, like we did, we did Amway, we did Rainbow. Um, Amway, Rainbow, the uh, twelve-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. Um, the only thing that actually consistently worked was, was flipping phones. phones. Yeah, it was the only thing that worked. I still remember showing um, showing one of my rainbow like mentor guys who was showing me how to door knock, um, like that I had done four thousand in sales like mm -hmm. that month flipping phones, which was like fifteen hundred dollars in profit. Yeah. And after that, I uh, I was like, you know what, screw this. I'm going back to the restaurant. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and I think like that, whenever you went back to the restaurant. I was there for when, about a year after that. Well, we had the bait. We yeah. had Renan. We had Renan at that point, yeah. Yeah. So, and then the whole birth. Yeah. Do you want me to tell that story? That's a long story. That's not that long. Yeah, you can tell it. <laughs> okay. So, um... I was a week late and the doctor, she said like, hey, we're going to have to induce you because he's just going to get bigger and it's going to be harder to push him out. And so we have a schedule to go to the doctor. Um, well, no, we were, we went to the doctor's appointment and then she said, hey, we're going to go ahead and send you to the hospital. You're going to get induced there. Um, so I was scared with my first baby. I didn't even know what in inducing was until like five minutes before I got there. Um, and everything about the birth felt like I wanted to do so much of it naturally. I didn't want a C-section. I didn't want to be induced. I didn't want my water to be broken. I didn't want drugs, like, to help. It changed. <laughs> I threw the whole birth plan out the window. Whole birth plan. <laughs> I had it printed. 
and like highlighted and everything. And it, I think one of the nurses actually threw it in the trash. Um, nothing went according to plan. Nothing was going according to plan. I get there, they start the Pitocin to force contractions. So, which like is apparently worse sometimes than natural contractions because they have a um, monitor that keeps up with the contractions and it would be like, Wee. but mine was all the way at the top and it would not record the, trans the contraction because of how high it was. And um, then the pain was so bad that I was screaming and one of the nurses came in and was just like, hey, so you're scaring the other moms. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, get this fucking thing! <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. Uh, my water still hadn't broken. The doctor came in with what looks like a crochet hook. Didn't know what it looked like. Um, they break my water. It's literally a crochet hook. They just go in. Um, let's see. They broke the water and then, then you push for like two hours. No, no, no. Not even done. Mm. Not even there. Then the pain, like the the IV medication, stopped working. It stopped working. I was in so much pain, and then they're like, "Do you want? Do you want an epidural?" And I was like, "Fuck yeah, I do! Give me the juice!" <laughs> and I purposely didn't look at the needle because I knew it was gonna be a big ass needle. That was wild. How how big was it? It was big. Show. Yeah. Show. I don't even like. Uh it was like the size of a forearm. Is what it was. It was pretty big. Let's just put it that way. It was. I would not have wanted it in my body. Yeah. And but when I tell you immediate relief, mm -hmm. immediate relief. Um. Then I got dilated. I pushed for two hours. Um. And then they told me that he's not gonna fit. That I need to do. A, I need to do a C-section. So, I, I could feel my body giving out. I started feeling light. I could feel my body giving out. I was stressed. I was in pain. And then they're like, okay, well, here's another thing that you're not going to want happen, happen. They wheel me into the surgery room for the C-section. They leave him outside. Yeah, they forgot about me. Like, I'm all, you know, gowned up and everything, and they literally forgot about... I guess they just work with single mothers all the time. Um, but, like, yeah, I was just kind of left. And one of the doctors... I guess you heard one of the doctors, like, oh, we forgot the husband. No, oh, they said, hey, isn't the dad supposed to be in here? And I was like... Yeah, it had me, like, super worried because I was just standing out there, like, super, like a long time. Yeah. And I was just like, what is going on here he thought i had actually passed away and that they were scared to come tell him <laughs> i didn't know what was going on so and, and then they bring him in we have ran in um and then pretty much as soon as i heard his cries i passed out <laughs> i was like okay he's good <laughs> Um, I woke up, found out that I had a spinal leak from my epidural. I had to spend a whole week in the hospital on my back because if I sat up like I am now, I blacked out. Yeah. Um, I didn't really get to bond with my baby for a whole week. I got to see him like twice because he was in the NICU. <sighs> Second one was a lot easier, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> After we had Ren and we brought him back home, I still had to heal from C-section. I was depressed as fuck. I had postpartum. We were in the hospital for... A week. A week, yeah. So... A whole seven days. Yeah, at this time, like, not able to work, not able to do anything. Well, you would... you. I uh, left to actually buy a few phones. Yeah. Because you, we literally... you weren't working. No, yeah. Because we, well, I, I could, would have been upset. Yeah. <laughs> Why well, we... Yeah, I mean... So... Like, as, like, that week, you know, we were in the hospital, um, like, I couldn't go to work. 
Mm-hmm. So I actually like would go down into the like lobby of the hospital and buy phones, <laughs> mm-hmm. like just to get some sort of income happening, you know? Um, so, you know, that was another way, like, like reselling really helped us. Um, it's cause at, you know, at certain times in, in our whole story, like that was the only income we ever had. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it, you know, that kind of, I know a lot of you guys listening are resellers, so you know, a lot of the times that's all you're going to have, especially in the hard times. Like, when you can't clock in. Yeah. When you can't clock in and all you have is a skill set, use it, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the first rule of entrepreneurship is like, you know, work with what you got, you know? Um, so yeah, we go through all of that, finally get the kiddo home. And by this point, we're actually in a pretty good house. Wait, no. Mm-hmm. We were still in an apartment. We were still in the yeah, apartment. Yeah, that was the second until, kid. <laughs> yeah. Until Renan was... He was walking around, so he yeah. was at least one. Yeah. We moved into that other house. The... Yeah, the big one. No, 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 no. Oh, the, yeah, the little the trailer one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the little... I liked that house, though. I liked it, too, until we had a tropical storm, Imelda, which was definitely a hurricane. Once again... <laughs> and it flooded our house while we were in it. We were in the house while the water was steadily rising. We had to move shit from one side of the house to the other side while we were waddling. Not waddling. I guess it was like ankle high on one side of the house because apparently the house wasn't level, but we didn't know that. Um, water was coming in through the windows on one side of the house. And... They were low windows, but still. (laughs) We had to, like, move the crib. We had to move all of the baby stuff. We had to move bookcases and books just to one side of the house. And then we're like, oh, my gosh, our friends live in a one-story apartment. Yeah, let's go get them. Like, the first floor apartment. So he had to go get them. I'm holding a baby. Or he was, like, one. He wouldn't sleep because, obviously, we're rushing around trying to get things off of the floor literally in a house while it's flooding i was freaking terrified yeah so there was that we ended up moving out of that yeah we, well we had we to there was like moved water damage parents. we moved back into my parents house for the second time right? for the second time but crap we lived there three times yeah Jeez. yeah so we moved into her parents house after that whole debacle and basically just took over there upstairs and that was the whole thing. We were there for a couple of months. I was re at this point. I was reselling full time. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to back up a little bit to the point where I did leave the restaurant because mm-hmm. I guess it wasn't actually that long before that. <laughs> um, so figure out what the timeline is. Yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of stuff that happened. So in a very I, short amount of time. The first month that I made four thousand in profit from reselling, um, that's when I decided to leave my restaurant job and go full time and. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done that that early, but you know, whatever. I made it work. But um, I still remember the day leaving that too. Like, I remember the the person cashing me out. They were like, "How's that? How's that little reselling business going?" And I'm like, "Well, I made four thousand in profit this month." And I remember them specifically pausing, and and then he was just like, "You know what, dude? That's awesome." Like, but you could like tell. Because he, he doesn't make that much in a month either. Like, even as a head waiter. And uh, just that pause. I will never forget that pause. I think it was... Uh, was it Chris? I think it was Chris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he was this... I still remember that pause to this day. And... Um, yeah. He... Uh, but yeah, he a- after that, he was just like, dude, that's awesome. And then it wasn't long after He was after a good that. dude. Yeah. It wasn't long after that when I left. Um, and went out on my own and, you know, and then went full time and then the hurricane hit and we moved back in with her parents and we were um, only in that little red manufacturer trailer house for two months Yeah, and then it flooded. And then, uh, I was re- I was driving back and forth. I was meeting people at Starbucks, um, daily and, uh, from my parents' house. Yeah. I was driving back and forth. It was like a 30 minute drive. Um, yeah. But hey, so I, like I made it work. Total. We were able to save up over ten thousand dollars from 
just reselling alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was also the time I started my little agency for running ads for people. So we had a little bit coming in from there too, which was, you know, my first source of like passive income, which was kind of cool. Um, and I was the first one to start an agency like that in, in our space anyway. And then there's all kinds of them now, which is cool. You know, everybody has their own thing, but. Mm -hmm. And then while we were living at my mom's house, found out why I was pregnant for a second time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we got pregnant again. Totally Oops. on accident. Um, and Kid then, was determined. Yeah, and then we needed to find a place because we weren't going to... We weren't Have a newborn. Living with our parents and stuff like that. Like, so. my mom had also adopted a yeah. little boy who was... He's only, like, a year older than our oldest. So... We would have three kids under three in one house. We were living there. Was my sister living there too? Probably. Probably. <laughs> so there was that. Anyway, um, we were able to save up about, I believe it was like ten or $12,000. And um, I, we found a house in Beaumont, oh, Beaumont, nice. Texas. It was a and, good house. Um, yeah, it was a nice house. And we rented it. And uh, we were there for, I believe, two years. And then, um, and then unfortunately, we had somebody... Well, we had Rowan yeah. while we were there. COVID. COVID, and then co Oh, my gosh. COVID happened during that time. I lost, and then I lost, like, all of my income. It's, once again, flipping saved our ass. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we weren't allowed to go anywhere. That was actually a very crucial time in, in my journey... Because I at that point I had built up about fifteen marketing clients, and then when COVID happened, all I businesses. lost I lost all of like almost all of them. Yeah, I lost six thousand dollars a month in in revenue. Well, we stayed in that house and we did not leave for like almost two months. Yeah, because we had babies. Yeah, like I was terrified to bring them anywhere. It was a wild time. Um, so that happened, and I, I still remember I was insanely depressed, but I didn't know it. Yeah. Because we were just watching, like, Ghost Adventures every day because we were bored we out were, of our mind. and Like, the whole day, the whole day was just him working to try to save our asses and me taking care of the kids. And then finally, after the kids would go to sleep and it would be, like, 8 o'clock at night, a little too late to reach out to anybody for phones... We would just watch Ghost Adventures for like two hours and then we would just go to bed and that was our day for a long time. I was insanely depressed. Well, <laughs> one day... Well, but, but the thing is with me, whenever I'm depressed, I don't... I'm not self-aware on it at all. But like I've gotten good enough to where I can kind of tell. Yeah. Like I'll ask him like, hey, you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> You're not though. I mean, I still remember we, us at you know making decisions. It at was the, literally this table. Yeah, it was this table. It was this table. You were sitting on that side of the bench, and I was sitting in the chair that's like right behind the camera. And he, he. I thought I was gonna have to go work at like H E B. Yeah. Like, well, I think we had Rowan sleeping on the table too. Maybe no, or no he, was he was taking a nap. Taking a nap. And then I think Renan was taking a nap too. But Both like, boys had fallen asleep. Yeah. And I came into the kitchen because, like, I could just sense something was off. And he's, he's worried. Like, we both start crying. Like, we're, we're, COVID made both of us depressed. Our kids are not getting any kind of interaction besides us. We don't, we can't go anywhere. They're just watching TV. He's on his phone all the time trying to help us. Yeah, that was at the time where I was doing like ninety-seven dollar deals and like it just, just trying it, to do something. Yeah, it just wasn't enough. And then like rent didn't go down for us either. Like some places they were doing like rent forgiveness, ours didn't. And like we still had to pay for food, but like we couldn't go grocery shopping, so we had to order food. That was like the only way that we could do it. Um. It, yeah. everything was falling around falling down around us and we just we just sat at this table 
and he was saying, I think I need to go work at HEB. I need to go back to serving. I need to do something. Well, I couldn't I'm, go back to serving. I couldn't. Oh, they were there closed. was no servers. No, they we couldn't. couldn't they do were, serving. They were closed. It was um, like at that curbside <clears throat> HEB, like where you have to wear a mask and you have to like be six feet away from everybody. Like you load up groceries in the car and then you walk back inside. We, so yeah, that that was a hell of a time in in, in our journey. Um, once again, I had to go back to flipping. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I was already flipping, but like, like even it, it, once again, it, it saved our ass again. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so I was actually meeting people at the post office because all the Starbucks were closed. Mm -hmm. Like the, the post office was literally the only place that was open. <laughs> um, and this was like March, 2020. And, um, after it was March cause that's when the lockdowns and stuff happened. No. Well, I was still pregnant in March. Yeah. We had him during COVID. Oh, maybe I, random asleep. I don't know. The timeline's weird. Um, we were depressed. Give us, yeah. some, give us, <laughs> give us some slack. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was that. And, um, at this time I was trying to figure out how to, how to just make money online. Um, and that's actually when I got introduced to, um, like, uh, so, well, let me back up a little bit here. Like I was trying to figure out how to make money, like from communities and Facebook groups. And I had been marketing for a gym and that she had to close it down. Mm -hmm. And she was like, how do I do this with, when people can't come to my gym? And I was like, well, let me brainstorm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, I was like, well, let's, let's just move it online. Like, let's just move it into a Facebook group. You can go live and you can do things like that, you know, and, uh, and then I'll cut my monthly thing in half for you just to make it work. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that is actually how I got introduced to monetizing Facebook groups. Um, I'd already been trying to figure out how to do it for a while, but at this point it was like, okay, I need to figure out how to do something online. Mm -hmm. I liked Samantha. Yeah, she's great. And, um, so we did that and then I got introduced to clients and community and, um, and the, I was actually nervous whenever you first brought up clients and community, cause I yeah. thought it was going to be another Amway yeah. or yeah. like rainbow. I thought it was, I thought we were going to fail at that too. And <laughs> I was just like, it's another thing. <laughs> it, was, it was a mentorship program. And I, I already had a Facebook group. I had a, I had a reseller Facebook group, about 2,800 people at that time. Mm -hmm. If you guys are in it, it's reselling electronics for profit. You probably, you guys probably know it already. Um, especially people following me for a while. Um, anyway, they showed how to run ads and get people in a Facebook group and then how to turn those people into high ticket clients or just clients in general. And so I teamed up with, uh, Dave Kosciusko, who was my first mentor. And I was like, Hey, you know, let me be your like client success director. I'll take care of all the calls. I'll do all the stuff. We'll just sell your course. And, um, it was actually pretty great because, you know, everybody needed money. And phone flipping was it the only thing that saved me from going broke. And uh, so I was like, you know what, let's just, you know, sell this, this program that's already proven to work. And I became his client success director. Um, and that once again, kind of pulled us out. It also pulled a lot of other people who joined the program, like out of like, like almost like poverty, right? Like, cause at this point, like, what are you going to do? Right. <laughs> Like, like, but you can always flip phones, you know, people are still buying stuff on eBay. Everyone has a phone. Yeah. So it went, you know, it helped a lot of other people. It helped me massively. And, uh, and then I was just able to continuously grow that Facebook group and still growing it to this day. Um, and I will never forget the clients and community price. It was the highest mentorship program I'd ever paid for. Mm -hmm. Um, at that time it was $2,800. And, but I remember being on the phone and I was like, you know, this has to work. This has to work. And, um, I, I did a three pay. It was like nine thirty three a month. Uh, but then, you know, we started getting sales coming in and things started happening and, and like the light was there, you know, and we were number one, we were helping people, but I was also making more money too. And, um, and now I'm actually partnered with them, which is pretty cool one of the greatest companies I've ever worked with. I'm a consultant with them now. Mm. Um, but I studied their process through and through. And um, during that time also, you know, I, I started making more money during COVID and um, 
finally basically got things back on track for the most part. Um, and then a couple of years, I guess things were kind of consistent with that. And then we almost had our house broken into and then we were like, it's time to get out of here. Because mm. Beaumont, Texas wasn't the greatest place to live. Um, it's it, one of the It has a pretty areas. high yeah. crime rate. So, um, so we started looking for another place to go and we moved out of the house and once again, moved back in with her parents. Well, we, we had like a, like a resting period basically where one lease ended, but the next one hasn't started yet. Yeah. So we had to move back in for what, like a month, two months again? Yeah. Just then, to, just to make the transition. Yeah. And then we got into the crappiest of, oh my God. Oh it was hell. It was literal hell. That apartment was hell. Yeah. I can, I'm, I. We were lied to, okay? We were lied to. They brought us to a nice unit, right? A nice unit. They're like, oh yeah, like dogs are family. That's what sold us is dogs are family because we had gone to like 15 other, other apartments who were like, what kind of dog do you have? And I was like, well, it's not a, it's not a Yorkie. <laughs> and then we're like, okay, well, what does it look like? And I'm like, oh. he's a German Shepherd Husky mix. And they're like, mm. and then I'll say, but he's not a German Shepherd. And one lady was like, well, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck. And I'm just like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he just insulted our dog. Oh, he is the sweetest dang dog ever. He's just kind of loud sometimes, okay? He has, he, he's anxious. <laughs> but that's what sold us on this apartment was dogs are family. And we're just like, they are, they are family. And they brought us to a like, it's an apartment. Like, you know, they painted over the walls three times. Painted over everything three times. We're like, it's an apartment. We understand. Yeah, it was. A, it was. It was. They're supposed, gonna yeah. cut corners. We like. It was an apartment. It was fine, but it, it was definitely nicer than the one that they moved us into. As soon as we walked in there, we're just like, is that roach feces on the ceiling? Yeah, so this was only supposed to be a temporary thing ah! anyway, uh, while we were looking we for were, a house. What was it? The lease was like eight months or yeah, something. It was, it was very, a weird... It was very short. It, we were only supposed to... We were trying to, We were trying out a new area. We didn't make it two months. We didn't make it... No, we made it three months. We, oh, we didn't make it three months. <laughs> yeah. So, like, and, then, I... and then we... Uh, you know, it got to the point where we were like, you know, we're going to... We're going to... We're going to let the health department know the whole thing. And, it was uh, so bad and they would not do anything like so we were battling roaches every fucking night i was caulking every single area of this apartment trying to keep them out and it just wasn't working i was cleaning everything with freaking bleach and like, I was scrubbing the floors. I was scrubbing the walls. I was scrubbing the ceilings. I'm like, my children live here. Yeah. My children live here. And I think the final straw of this horrible, horrible situation was our three-year-old, Renan, at the time. He came up to me and just like, Mommy, I don't want to sleep in my bed. There's monsters. Yeah. I started fucking crying. I went up to the office with Chris and I was like, you are going to let us out of this lease right now. I yep. want out. My children are scared to sleep in this apartment. You lied to us and I will absolutely get better bureau, uh, better business bureau. I will get like the, health the fucking department. health department. Yeah. This is, this is horrible. This is a horrible, horrible situation. And they're just like, Pretty sure that you guys brought them in with you. And it's just like, bitch, you think I brought hundreds and hundreds, generations, generations. We have great, 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 great grandpa roaches living with their great, 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 great grandson roaches. Like yeah, it was wild. It was 
So, yeah, we bro- we we made them break the lease, um, and then I started looking for another place, which is where we found the place we're in, actually. Um, funny enough about this place, uh, we came here, and we were going to do a tour, and... Oh, my God! The, the it code, was one bad thing after another. Yeah, the code for the door wasn't working. Mm-mm. And I was like, why? Like, they're giving me the code. Like, what's happening? Right? And... So what I found out was they had the wrong code for the for the door, and uh, and like they were like, well, people have been stopping by, and I was like, yeah, they're they, not coming in. They ain't going inside apparently, mm-hmm. and we had, you know we really you liked were it. on the phone for almost two hours yeah. while me and Emily were just walking around, yeah. trespassing a little bit. We were <laughs> well, anyway, we liked the place, <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna apply for it, and mm-hmm. uh, you know because we already did like it. And the the reason nobody else has been applying for is because it couldn't walk in. <laughs> it couldn't get inside. It, so all I, of the work, it's like the scholarships all over again. <laughs> I saw that as a massive opportunity, uh, and you know we like the place we're in now, and we've been here for a year, just over a year, mm-hmm. and um, we just signed the lease yeah. for another year. So I mean everything up until this point, uh, for the most part, you know, things have been going, pr- I guess, pretty well. Um, so I guess here we are now. Um, but yeah, some roadblocks in, in, in the way for sure. Um, just like here, 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 and here. Yeah. <laughs> so reselling in this new area. Um, but you know, I know a lot of, a lot of you guys watching are resellers and this is the marketing reseller podcast. Guys, I can't tell you how many times reselling has literally just, like, saved my ass. Mm. Like Saved his family's ass, yeah, too. Yeah, saved the whole family. Like, like, you know, I'd never leave it at this point just because, uh, or I'd never leave the option to have it, right? Because it's a skill set at this point where I can just, I can start it at any point <clears throat> in my life. And, uh, you know, this is where I kind of started my whole journey with 75 Hard and, you know, like now I got my fancy cup, and, mm-hmm. you know, so I mean, this, I mean, that's pretty much everything up until this point. And like, you've been able to like pay off our debts. Yeah. Like okay. all the debt we accrued during COVID and everything. Yeah. Look, my health is not that great. <laughs> I've gone to the hospital quite a few times. I had like a pretty significant hospital bill because my immune system is not very good. If there is a sickness out there. I shall receive it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then both of our kids got RSV. Don't kiss babies that are not yours. Don't fucking touch babies that are not yours. <laughs> both the kids got them. Um, but like we both had to, we had to pay for their tongue ties out of pocket. Yeah. Because they both had tongue ties. Thank you, reselling. Thank you, reselling. Like... I had to get a lot of dental surgery because of pregnancies. Another significant bill. Like, and now we only have like four actual sources of debt yeah. versus tons of little ones and then a few big ones like cars. Yeah. And now we only have our two yeah, cars. Mostly it's just the cars now and uh, the SBA loan we took out during COVID, and that's about yeah. it. Um, other than, you know, just a couple smaller ones. But other we, than that, like, it's not crazy. We literally had to take the SBA loan out to survive COVID. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like, because the that's reselling was helping, but we were all, like, he was still new at it, kind of. Not new, but, like, there wasn't a whole lot of phones. Yeah. But, like, it was still helping. Yeah. And then... It was a wild time. Yeah. But, you know, that's everything up until this point. So, by the way, you know, uh, we're going to go ahead and probably wrap this one up. We're over an hour on this. So, um... You have a life to... You've got a life story to tell. You I told know. it. <laughs> Big. Um, but tune in. So, this is the first episode of the new and improved uh, Marketing Reseller Podcast. Uh, have, you know, if you guys liked it, let me know. Comments and, um... Anything to add, babe? Um... No. <laughs> I think I've talked a lot. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so, thanks guys for watching. Yeah. And uh, get out there and crush it.